This is not a brand new fighter. It is not stealth, not supersonic, not heavy and not long range. However, hundreds of pilots have been waiting for its appearance for a couple of decades. A curious combination of simplicity and conservatism with versatility and technological advancement, American ambition and Swedish precision. Hello aviators, Sky here and today we are taking a look at one of the coolest light high speed aircraft that was a big step for the US Air Force and the forerunner of an even bigger step for the aircraft industry. Standing before us is the Boeing Saab T7 Red Hawk. In 1959, the Northrop T-38 Talon took to the skies for the first time. A jet trainer with excellent performance at an affordable price was the key to success, the love of aviators, large scale production and many versions, including the full fledged F-5 fighter. But the story of success began, I repeat, in 1959. And so, by the beginning of the 21st century, the US Air Force thought that in order to train pilots, first of all for fighters of the 4th, 5th and even the 6th generation, the plane of the Eisenhower era was already not very suitable. And it was time to leave the old guy alone and find a replacement for it. The search for a replacement have become a very long matter. The TX program began back in 2003, when the Air Force started considering concepts. As it should be in bureaucratic wars, the military could not approve the budget for a very long time. On the other hand, the T-38s were becoming increasingly problematic due to physical obsolescence. Because of this, the dates were constantly getting shifted in one direction or another. The vision of the aircraft however continued to form. Flying with limits up to 7.5G, group flights day and night, imitation of air combat, work with new communication systems and so on, in accordance with the training programs of modern and future military vehicles. An important requirement was the ability to imitate the F-22 and F-35, their onboard systems. At the beginning this requirement was criticized, the aircraft would become more complicated. But the lack of such capability would mean that the pilots would have to complete their training on real fighters, and this would be even more expensive. Oh yes, the main requirement. The creators had to combine all the wishes of the military in a plane that was sufficiently cheap, both in purchase and in operation. The search for a concept and the battle for budgets ended in 2015, when a full-fledged tender was initiated under the Advanced Pilot Training System program. The contract promised to be quite delicious and there were many participants in the tender. Among the simpler birds, there were such machines as the Javelin from Stewadi Airspace and the TX Freedom from the American Sierra Nevada and Turkish Airspace. The Italian Leonardo, having one of the best training aircraft in its portfolio, also did not endure the tender and offered the T-100, a localized version of the M346 Master. A more serious couple were Northrop Grumman and BAE Systems, who offered the Hawk T2 with a large scale modernization of the airframe and onboard systems. Later Northrop abandoned the idea of modernization of the old plane and together with scaled composites offered the stylish Model 400 Swift. The most unusual participant in the race was the Scorpion, brainchild of Texton and Airland. Actually, it was made as a light attack aircraft and reconnaissance aircraft with a corresponding performance and appearance, a bit unconventional. As part of the TX program, changes were to be made to the design, adding an engine and changing the wing. One of the favorites was the brainchild of Lockheed Martin and Korea Airspace Industries, the KAI T-50 Golden Eagle. The aircraft was quite new and was created as a combat trainer for the South Korean Air Force, although even then Lockheed conceived it as a potential replacement for the T-38. And finally, today's hero. Boeing and the Swedish Saab Group announced a joint project to participate in the TX tender back in 2013. 
Both companies are rich in experience, expertise and technology, having created such well-known machines as the FA-18, F-15 and Yas-39. And their proposal, a single-engine aircraft supersonic designed from scratch to meet the requirements of the Air Force. Design is a special topic. The TX is the first living embodiment of the Boeing E-Series, airspace systems designed using the latest tools and model-based digital engineering. The trend towards more and more large-scale use of new digital systems is obvious. Given the complexity of modern aircraft, without such solutions it would be unbearably difficult and monstrously expensive to create them. In addition, the modular architecture, a high amount of software and the existence of, in fact, a virtual version of the aircraft should ensure the simplification of production and maintenance, rapid updating and adaptability. The results are already here. The TX design team of a rather modest size created the aircraft in just three years, from pictures at presentations in 2013 to a flying plane in 2016, by modern standards very quickly. By the way, not only Boeing indulges in this, we are still waiting for results. Let's be honest, of all the proposed options, the creation of Boeing and Saab was the most interesting. Some participants could hardly pull off the contract, for others the aircraft were too expensive, and for some the performance did not fit the requirements of the customer. Meanwhile the American-Swedish team has a serious baggage of competences, production capabilities and at the same time created an aircraft from scratch to meet the current requirements at a fairly modest cost. In 2018, Boeing and Saab were announced as winners of the TX tender. In 2019, the TX index went into history. The aircraft received the official name T-7A Red Hawk. The name of the aircraft is a tribute to the Tuskegee Airmen Group, which flew during World War II and consisted mainly of African-American pilots. They painted the tails of their aircraft red, hence the word red, and flew mainly the Curtis P-40 Warhawk fighters, hence the word Hawk. So, what could they offer? The T-7A Red Hawk is a single-engine jet trainer. The aircraft is quite compact, 14.2 meters long, 10 meters wingspan, 4 meters high. Its maximum takeoff weight is about 5.5 tons. The plane is surprisingly light. The M346 Master, for example, weighs 9.6 tons and the Golden Eagle as much as 12.3 tons, a lot more. Its airframe layout is relatively classic. The wing is trapezoidal with simple mechanization. On the trailing edge there are large flaperons that perform the functions of ailerons and flaps in a single surface. In front, small slats superimposed on the leading edge occupy almost half of its length. Aerodynamics should be decent, although there seems to be a desire to make the high lift devices even simpler. Meanwhile the wing has rather large leading edge root extensions. At the junction of the wing and root extension, small LEX fences are installed. The tail unit has two vertical stabilizers. For modern fighters it's quite familiar, but among light aircraft one fin is more common. The requirements for the T-7 in terms of maneuverability are quite serious and you need to fly supersonic confidently, so it was decided to make a pair. The fins are quite compact, they free up space above the engine, turning the rudders in different directions works as an aerodynamic brake. Besides, Boeing has a rich experience with twin-fin aircraft, why not? With such extensions and the tail, the T-7 resembles the FA-18, but single engine, small and light, kind of a kid version. Given that the Super Hornets are made by the same company in the same factory, it makes sense. It can be assumed that the Red Hawk also managed to inherit the maneuverability of its older brother, which is extremely important for it. The landing gear is tricycle. The legs of the main gear received one large wheel each, and in flight they are hidden in the center part of the fuselage. The front turning leg is small, located respectively in the nose section of the cockpit. If you feel that you've already seen something like this, then yes, the landing gear is almost an exact copy of the F-16 gear, another way to speed up work and save money. 
The cockpit has a tandem stadium seating. The student sits in front, the instructor behind and a little higher. The hefty canopy opens to the side. Its white glazing gives an excellent view for both. For modern trainers this is a common scheme, but compared to the T-38 this is a leap. There the visibility was worse, especially for the instructor sitting behind who didn't see practically anything in front of him. The cockpit received a very advanced filling for its budget. Several interfaces are arranged in front of the pilots, including a large multi-function display. The interfaces are duplicated, the instructor sees everything that the student does. Meanwhile piloting is performed using side sticks. The onboard computer is easily programmed and can simulate systems, communication channels and weapons of adult combat aircraft. In appearance, it strongly resembles the cockpit of the F-35. The T-7 is a single-engine aircraft, an obvious solution for better economy. This engine is the General Electric F-404, a veteran who has seen a lot, has already been worked out and distinguished. Boeing is putting it in the FA-18, and Saab in its Yas-39 is putting the Volvo RM-12 engine, which is basically a localized version of the F-404. Air enters the engine through two miniature air intakes located on the sides of the fuselage. In normal mode, the engine produces 49 kN of thrust and with afterburner 76 kN. Such thrust is quite enough to perform all training tasks and ensure excellent maneuverability. The service ceiling of the T-7 should reach 50,000 feet over 15 km. The range is about 1,000 miles over 1,800 km. By the way, marks and elements of the aerial refueling system are visible on the fuselage from above, so at least the study of this technique is taken into account. Afterburner allows the aircraft to reach supersonic speed and accelerate to 700 knots, 1300 km per hour. Not a huge speed, but not bad for a trainer aircraft. Most of the T-7's brothers are subsonic, so they spared no expense here. All this performance brings the T-7 as close as possible to the capabilities of modern fighters. Pilots will be able to work out almost the entire training program. Not like before when flying trainers provided only a base and a significant part of learning had to be done already on combat vehicles. Considering how much it costs to operate an F-22 or F-35, this is too much even for the Pentagon. The contract given to Boeing and Saab in 2018 is, as expected, quite delicious. They must supply 351 aircraft, 46 ground simulators and all related equipment, as well as trained personnel. Plus, the possibility of subsequent expansion of the order up to 475 planes. The Air Force will pay $9.2 billion for this, with the catalog price of one aircraft being $19.3 million apiece. Not to say that this is very cheap, but quite acceptable. For example, the Italian M346 or the Korean T-50 cost about $25 million. Naturally, having received such an interesting model at their disposal, its owners immediately began to glance at the general market in search of potential foreign customers. In addition, Boeing also has a Combat F-7 on its list of ideas, which can be proposed to replace the old light fighters, like the F-5, which itself was the combat brother of the training T-38. The total market for such machines, according to Boeing, is about 2700 units. Ambitious. The assembly was set up at St. Louis, at one of the main factories of the Boeing military division, where the F-A-18 and F-15 are being made. Saab is responsible for part of the onboard systems and software, as well as the tail section of the airframe. For their production, the company built its own site in the United States, in West Lafayette, Indiana. The speed of implementation of the program is quite decent, not counting a decade of messing up the concept even before the launch of the tender, of course. At the final stage there was a delay in production, but it was caused mainly by pandemic restrictions, disruption of logistics and the problem of supplying parts. Considering what happened in aviation in 2020, we can say that the Red Hawk still got off lucky. 
The first production T-7A was assembled in the spring of 2022 for transfer to the Air Force as part of the engineering and manufacturing development phase. Later, there will be full-fledged serial deliveries. This concludes our acquaintance with the newcomer. Now, the Red Hawk should become a worthy replacement for the Talon and serve as a springboard to the sky for several generations of pilots. Like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind-the-scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights and soft landings to you.